Frugal Crafter. Oh my goodness, I get so many requests from you guys after stamp school about alcohol ink. And those are these little uh, bottles here. Um, you've probably seen the Tim Holtz Adirondack alcohol inks in your craft store. They usually come in packs of three for about $10. There's also the Pinata brand of alcohol ink, and those are usually available singularly, but they're around the same price. And um, they're both wonderful products. I think they're about the same. Um, I have to admit, I have tried making my own alcohol ink on several occasions and never made any that really worked, meaning they didn't wipe off my surface with a damp rag. So um, this is one of those situations where I'd say just go and buy some. Um, it a little goes a long way. I've been using alcohol inks for years and you can see I've barely made, well, you can't really see because I can't hold it sideways. Um, but I mean, really, I mean, this is probably one of my oldest ones and is like half gone, but I've been using it since probably 2002, since they first came out or maybe they came out before then. But um, like I got these back when my local art supply, supply store was in town and they've been gone for quite a few years. So um, they really do last a long time. And what I did here was I took an old watercolor palette and I put some of them, um, just a few drops in each of the wells and let them dry. And now I have a painting palette so I can kind of get a look um, of alcohol markers if I want. And you can totally use alcohol ink reinkers or markers for some of these techniques. So the first thing you're going to need for this technique is a photocopy of, um, of some images. And you might remember earlier this week, I did the gel medium transfers and I had a bunch of photocopies left over. So I, Halloween's coming. So I have some kind of creepy looking ones that I've cut out and I thought I'd make some Halloween coasters because I always have a big party every Halloween and, um, great place for people to put their drinks of our drinks after we send the kids on their way to trick-or-treat but we all have older kids now so that's not as scary as it sounds um so what i'm going to do here is take some just regular tiles from the home improvement store they're about i don't know 10 cents piece somewhere around there maybe a little more um and then i'm going to take some just regular old isopropyl alcohol that you get um you know from the drugstore and i keep it right in a little bottle i use this for when i'm making soap i use it to clean my glasses <laughs> uh for all sorts of different things and basically what i'm doing here is i'm going to clean my um my tiles because because if you have any oils from your fingers or any dust on there, it's going to affect the um, the outcome of our project. Now, the only other fancy product you're going to need is a um, is a chart pack marker or xylene. So chart pack markers contain xylene. So they're different than alcohol markers. So they won't um, smear alcohol ink and alcohol ink won't lift. The xylene. So you can get xylene at the hardware store, um, but I would really recommend getting a chart pack clear blending marker. It's a couple bucks, but and it will make this process so much easier. And you can always refill it with xylene from the hardware store if you want to save some money down the road. Uh, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is find our images that we want to transfer. I thought this was really, this. these both came from the Graphics Fairy website or blog. And this is a rattlesnake skeleton. And this is just a kind of a old-fashioned moon and I thought those would be really fun to transfer. So what you want to do is put your image down, face down on your tile and I want to make sure that the head doesn't get cut off because this is a little bit bigger than my tile. And then take your marker and I will warn you these stink. So um, if you have any sensitivity to to smells, they do it outside or have somebody else do this step because it it does reek. Um, but you kind of, you need to have this as your base. Well, it's, uh, I think there might be other substances that will transfer. I've heard vodka does, but I would worry if you're using alcohol to transfer it, that it might actually get lifted up when you do the, um, the alcohol coloring. So the reason I like the marker is I've done it with xylene in a cotton ball, but I have found that you're more likely to have it, the colors bleed. And I think it's just cause you get too much. The uh, marker does two things. It burnishes the, your transfer down to your surface. And it also regulates the amount of, of uh, the fluid that comes out. So I've had this one for years as well, and I haven't had it dry out or anything. I would just refill it with xylene when it does, uh, when it does dry out, unless the tip is shot, then I will, then I would just buy a new one. But you know, under four bucks, I think, our supply store. Okay, so then what you want to do is peek under. Okay, see how it's transferred. There's a few spots that need a little bit more love. And up here. So it's a, it's a cross between the pressure and the fluid that's transferring this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't mind a little vintage kind of distressed look on these anyway because it's a you know Halloween project. You could do this for with any image for any season. You could do Christmas, um, 
decorations and uh, stuff like that too. I did get a little smudging up there so I think what I might do is just kind of touch it up, wipe it off with this marker. Okay, and then you'll want to let that dry. Now, it looks like there's a lot of ink left on here, but I have tried trying to get another print from the same um, from the same photocopy. It doesn't work, so you're best off just to toss that in the trash. All right, we're going to do our little moon here. Um, I think I probably ought to do the wit, do one of those witches too. I just want to make sure I don't get confused. I want to try the moon. I want to see how detailed I can get with this. And then maybe we'll do one of those sexy witches again because that that's a really bold design and I think this will capture a lot of detail but as far as like coloring with alcohol ink you might want a more bold design. You can tell that you've got it all covered which is easy because it makes your paper transparent and I would definitely have your photocopies made on just cheap regular paper. Don't go for cardstock. And you can take you can print stuff at home and take it down to like your local library and have them do it. Oh that looks kind of cool. Hopefully the glare isn't bothering you too much. I'm gonna see with the other there we go here's the other sexy witch oh here's another thing you have to reverse your are typing this if i try this it's going to be backwards so yeah <laughs> i only grab another tile hold on a second i have like hundreds of these because we did our bathroom in white tiles many years ago and uh our contractor had us get extras because we got those cheap they were cheap at the home depot and um he said they're, they'll be cheaper but we'll need to pick through them um for imperfections and stuff and so we had so much left over we never returned and i've been using them for in like kids craft classes like forever i think every every uh everybody in my hometown has a set of coasters or kids made in an art class <laughs> Uh, we're gonna do the same thing here. This is, uh, as you can see, a very bold line art drawing. And uh, so you do have to worry a little, well, not really worry, we don't need to worry. But um, when you have a lot of ink there, it might want to puddle on you and you might get a little feathering, but it's not a big deal. Um, the alcohol colors we're gonna use are so strong that I don't think, I think any feathering will just be pretty, pretty well hidden. Again, remember a little bit of pressure really helps transfer, but I mean it's pretty foolproof in a foolproof technique. I probably wouldn't leave these markers around with the kids. Like I said, they are extremely smelly. Things that smell like that usually are not good to use for prolonged periods of time. So, you know, cap it up when you're not using it. Use it in a well-ventilated area or take it outside. All right. Oh, that one came out really well. Okay, so it just takes a few seconds for it to dry. Um, what I'm going to show you first is just a general alcohol ink polish stone technique. You can see I did it on this one. This was a um, wrought iron gate, and I think my colors might have been a little too bold for that. This is the original print. I've been like scribbling my uh, brush off on that, but so you can kind of see. And um, we're going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to use a little bit lighter of an ink. Oh. Bar uh, Beverly Mossman, I couldn't reply to your comment, but the color I had on my sponge was stream. There you go. Sorry about that. Sometimes I don't have a little reply button on, under somebody's um, uh, comment. <laughs> so I just want to make sure she saw that because I know she was interested in the alcohol ink techniques. Hey, Bev, how's it going? Do you feel like a superstar? I feel like a, I, I feel like a superstar saying it. Okay, so now I've got my little, um, my little baby block with some velcro on it wicked fancy and i'm gonna put a little sponge not a sponge it's a piece of craft felt the cheap stuff i buy when it goes on sale and um i stick it right to the velcro i usually get a couple so i can do a couple different colors i'm gonna do um citrus and I'll put a couple drops on there. I would stick, stay away from the metallic ones when you're going over a transfer because it's good. They'll be opaque and they'll obscure your, um, your design. I think I'll do a little butterscotch. So it's got kind of a little bit of yellow, but not a ton. Might just do those colors. We'll see how that, how that looks. So I really think these are a great supply to invest in. Um, and I'm just dabbing. See, I'll, I would, what I tell you, a little bit goes a long way. Now for finishing these, there's a product that I really like called Triple Thick Glaze by Krylon. And after everything's dry, I just go outside and, you know, set down some newspaper and just um, put all my coasters at one time. And then, um, and then I would just spray them. So that's, that's what I do to give them a nice protective finish. Otherwise, you know, somebody washes them a little too aggressively and they may, you know, kind of come apart. I'm using, or the, the picture will come off. I'm using Latte. Just gonna give it a few little stamps out here and then we get some really cool stuff happening 
All right, you can kind of see where the ink has dried and it's kind of pushing the ink around. I think that looks kind of like marble. I think it's a very cool look. Now to make these into coasters, put a little cork or felt on the back side so they don't scratch tables and that's pretty much it. Now you could drop color on here. Now if you just dropped color from the bottles, you get these cool blooms and you get some more um, distinct shapes. That's totally fine. I think you should experiment. If it doesn't turn out well, spray it with rubbing alcohol and wipe it off. That's, you know, pretty easy. Okay, now if you want to color an image, that's really easy too. Now you could actually just use your alcohol markers. That would work just fine. But for here, I'm going to show you kind of like a painterly technique using the inks in a palette like this. And I have a little dish of uh, denatured alcohol, which is a little bit stronger than rubbing alcohol. It uh, dissolves the paint a little bit better. And I have a little paintbrush. And um, I'm going to begin just by painting the broom. And try, you know, try not to get too fussy because... This is not a fussy project. I am using a number three brush from Royal Lang Nickel. I'm gonna just add some of that, that brown in there to shade the the uh, broom. What I do is I wipe off the extra, then I just swish it in my alcohol to to uh, rinse it. I get denatured alcohol at the hardware store. You can also find that xylene um, stuff if you don't want to get the chart pack markers at the hardware store. I would say it's it's under ten dollars. Uh, like a gallon of either of these don't buy a gallon buy a pint because you'll never go through a gallon <laughs> even with all like the alcohol stuff i do here you don't go through um that much and you can use ethanol as well but i don't know where you buy that um denatured alcohol is essentially ethanol with some poisons in there so people don't drink it so it's probably hard to obtain um all right so i want to now i'm going to skip over to the background and i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna take some alcohol and add it to that stream color and i'm just gonna paint around the moon I don't want to go too close to anything I've just done because I don't want it to smear because it's kind of like using watercolors at this point. If you go next to wet alcohol ink, it's going to smear. You probably could even use um, rubbing alcohol for this, but um, I don't want to weaken it and rubbing alcohol has some water in it. So I want to make sure it's going to stay, you know, completely washable. It's not going to lift up when I'm done. And that's the deal with my homemade. I tried different um, dyes. I tried even powder dyes and denatured alcohol. I tried regular alcohol. I just couldn't find, couldn't make a recipe that would work for um, for making my own alcohol inks. If anyone has a recipe that that works that they want to share, leave it in the comments. I'm sure other people would really benefit from it. I would give it a try. I'm not too optimistic at this point after all the experimenting that I've done over the years. I've tried, um, I've tried really concentrated computer printer reinker and, um, and denatured alcohol. I've just never, never come across anything I was really happy with. It looks like she's got a little scarf there, so I'm not going to paint on top of it this time. I did the last time. But the glaze is very important. To, even clear spray paint. You can get clear spray paint for a dollar or 97 cents a container at, you know, Walmart. So you don't have to go get the triple thick. I think that's probably around three or four dollars. But it does it does work really well. And it gives you that kind of glazed pottery look. You can even use it on like terracotta pot, pots. And I'm not, um, I don't have any affiliation with a Krylon company. I just really think that's a great product. I think I'm out of it currently, actually. And see, when you when you layer on, now this is kind of cool, if you want the look of clouds, when you layer on, whoops, is that the color is that? Yeah, that's purple. If you layer on, if your brush is wet enough, it'll push the pigment, it'll reconstitute um, all the pigment underneath and kind of push it around so you get a cool, you get that cool uh, cloud look. So can you see how addicting that is? It's so fun. Really, really fun. All right, I'm going to do the moon yellow. I don't know if I have all my colors in my little palette here or not. I made this a long time ago, and look, I can still reconstitute my colors. I think that's pretty cool. I've noticed, like, the pinata. It seems like the pinata line of colors are a little bit more pure and bright, and the, the Tim Holtz colors, the Distress colors, definitely follow the Distress line of products. So I use both, depending on what I want. Uh, the pinata colors I, I, uh, I got first because... I think they, they were available first around here to me, and, uh, and I really, really like them. All right, now, let's see, she's got a little scarf. Maybe I'll do that red or something. Let's see, well, why not? She's a witch. Let's give her a nice red scarf. There we go. 
and I'm gonna leave her pale because she is flying in front of the moon and um, there you have it we could try we, so there's that all finished and we have our crazy snake skeleton and let's just give this a give this a whirl here um, I don't think I have any well I have you know what I have stays on black I don't really want to make that black though I think I'll go with my uh, with my um, yellow what's this color that's kind of a brown we can add some of that in the shadows so pretty much it, that, that's you know that's how to do a transfer you could do this on dominoes with your photocopy transfers um, you could do this on any sort of slick surface you could do those bigger tiles and make um, trivets that would be a really cool present so think about that when you're like I put I think I put too much liquid on there because um, I wanted a smoother image so think about that as you're getting ready for you know holidays and all that good stuff maybe I'll add some green you know they used to say the, the moon is made of cheese Swiss cheese cream cheese I don't know what kind of cheese being a vegan and all I don't eat it but my husband told me you cannot uh, you can't substitute sour cream for cream cheese but I substitute uh, tofu for ricotta cheese all the time. They tell me I'm not fooling anybody. What do you think? <laughs> and again, I think I'll just do some more, uh, some more clouds in the background. That's really bright. Let's go that more subtle purple. I like how the uh, how the colors blend and flow. So there you go. There's kind of like a basic, uh, a couple of basic things to try with your alcohol inks if you have some. If not. You know they're they go on sale. I I probably recommend picking them up at Joann's when they have their their stamping supplies on sale because that's when I got all mine and they were like, um, I think I paid like between five and six dollars a pack of three most of the time just because they would have those crazy um, forty to fifty percent off sales and whenever their stamping stuff is on on sale all their inks and things are anyway online and um, in my local Joann's so. I, and if I go in, I actually save more if I go in because I have a professional membership with them. So if you belong to like a quilting guild, if you belong to a society of decorative painters like I do, you can um, you can get that VIP discount of an additional 10% off of your, uh, your sale items and um, your regular priced items. So it's a really big help. It's, um, it's very nice. Well, I'm not too impressed with this one. I think I was rushing it a little bit, but you get the idea. That's a little, that's a little amateurish, but eh, it's alcohol ink on a tile. I'm not going to worry about it. So there you have it. Alcohol inks. Make sure you cap them up when you're done because they will evaporate. And if you have any questions, leave them in the video description. I want to thank everybody that asked for alcohol ink tutorials. I hope you found something enjoyable here. If not, you got a couple coasters anyway. You got some new coasters for your, for your home. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, one more thing. I know I'm going to get a question, so I'm just going to answer it. Uh, someone I know will ask me, can I stamp with stays on and do the same thing? If you want to stamp your images on with stays on don't color them with alcohol inks color them with chart pack markers because chart pack won't lift the alcohol if you stamp with stays on and then you try to go in with these alcohol paints or your alcohol markers it's going to lift it's going to get your markers all muddy it's going to smear the design and you're going to be frustrated so i just wanted to let you know that uh, before anybody asked so thank you so much for watching and give me a thumbs up and subscribe and share this with your friends if you liked it until next time happy crafting